ladies and gentlemen i think the moment we have all been waiting for and this beautiful personality who spends more time in our country than he does in his home country let's hear it once for this multifaceted gentleman bradley woo and one small request which i must make to you all please 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 put off your mobile phones we really want to enjoy this day with brett and uh, so please do that we also have on the dais with us akshaya and samir borkar the brains behind the art and craft gallery and of course mr sunandan lele who does not know him my god i think all of us puneites and all indians know him very very well so let's get on with the program shall we yes theek hai are wah wo humse zyada hindi bol lete hain namaste हम अच्छे हैं आप कैसे हो ओ क्या बात है ब्लश ब्लश आई थिंक ही नोज क्वाइट बिट ऑफ हिंदी तो हम हिंदी में कर सकते हैं बट आई थिंक वी विल गो ग्लोबल एंड विल गो इन एन इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज वॉट इज एन आर्टिस्ट ओके आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू गो विथ फॉर लाइट वर्ड्स ऑन दैट दे वॉज एन आर्टिस्ट वंस अपॉन अ टाइम he had displayed his paintings at an art gallery and uh, he went home he came back in the evening and asked the gallery owner how many pictures of mine have been sold has anybody inquired so the gallery owner told him that yes there was one gentleman who was very keenly interested in your uh, pictures and he asked me will these pictures be very very valuable after the artist is no more so the gallery owner said yes of course it will multiply multifold and that gentleman bought all the paintings this painter was so excited he asked the gallery owner who was the gentleman so the owner said that's the saddest part of the news he was your doctor well this actually doesn't happen any more because today all you artists all those who are here from all over the country are getting such wonderful platforms only and only due to akshaya borkar and samir borkar through their art and craft gallery and they have brought this beautiful concept here for us today that is sport plus art which is spart 2017 and it gives me radhika chavhan an immense pleasure to be hosting this event in front of this august audience and an even more august presence on the dais ladies and gentlemen welcome you all once more and before we go ahead with the program i'd like to invite the director of art and craft gallery mr samir borkar to please give us a talk thank you radhika um most of you don't know me who i am but uh radhika just introduced me i'm uh, the director and one of the co-founders of the art and craft gallery but some of you do know that akshaya is another founder member and she is partner in business as well as in life on behalf of entire art and craft gallery team it gives me immense pleasure to welcome the legendary baller the singer the actor binga the bradley i would also like to welcome aplya punache sunandan lele sir further i welcome artists media representatives dignitaries and all art lovers and supporters we had uh, gotten this event set up in just 3 weeks and it has been immense hard work that has gone into uh to make this event happen so well done akshaya and art and craft gallery team so what i was saying is artist thank you 
What I was saying is artists inspire me every day. Your passion for your work, your ethics and determination to keep the rarest form alive, um, art forms alive, are some of the qualities beyond imagination. The artist, Art and Craft Gallery was founded to nurture those qualities. It was founded in Melbourne in 2013 after running a pilot operations in Melbourne, winning few startup awards in Melbourne as well as in the US. Akshaya decided to expand the operations at global level and hence she moved after 12 hours of stay in Australia to Pune because that's our hometown. Um, she moved about a year and a half ago and she's been, she's been operating um, events and supporting artists in Pune for nearly 18 months. We have invited Braid because similar to us, we have um, tie-ups both in Australia and India. We all know Braid's passion for India and Indian people. Braid supports a number of charity organizations in Australia as well as India. One most appeal to me is music, which is a charitable foundation that has a number of centers across India and it aims to help um, disadvantaged young artists. We are trying to do, uh, he, he's helping artists into music industry, but we are trying to do similarly into ha uh, handmade industry. The mission of our gallery is um, simple, running unconventionally. That means we don't charge any selling commission. We don't focus on sales only, like typical art and craft fairs or markets, but we help artists gain overall business acumen. We teach them how to be commercially successful and help building the brand. We are a social enterprise, not an NGO. We don't rely on grants, government support, and charity only. We work on lean business model and we have been teaching our artists, industry, uh, artist friends, same thing. So far, we call unconventional the art and craft gallery. The acronym is UNTAG. Uh, feel free to hashtag and go live. <laughs> so far, we have UNTAG family of nearly 300 artists from 10 different countries. And the number is still growing. Our vision is to abolish the struggling artist phenomena by 2020. We hope bringing sports stars like Brett, um, business stars some, uh, in, in audience, and some television stars I can see from here, Shashank, <laughs> um, to achieve mainly a couple of things. You know, to share the journey of a, of a star who's, who's been a cricketer, but how he pursued his passion about music, about his art, um, acting, um, and also bring a little bit of glamour to handmade art, handmade um, art and craft industry. Similarly, we have, uh, similar to uh, the glamour we have seen in the past 10, 15 years in music as well as sports industry. So again, a big thank you all for coming here and supporting our cause. And uh, thank you for being here and I'm stopping here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Samir. I think he said all that I had to say, so he's made me quite redundant at this moment. But no, I'm still going to say something. Um, we have amongst us here Mr. Sunandan Lele. And we have a lot of people who are in the country. But we have a lot of people who are in the country. Though I know I am no one to introduce you but it's my honor to do so. He's first and foremost a cricketer and later a journalist. He's the consulting sports editor of IBN Lokmat, that's the television news channel, and a sports consultant for the Sakal Group. He has also worked as a freelancer for BBC Radio and ABC Radio Australia for more than five years. And uh, this is a little bit of information that I had. And I happen to say that I hope Sangle Olokto, one of the Ekda Zorda Talia for Mr. Sunandan Lele. Let me briefly introduce him to you, though Samir has done the honors. I'll just add on a little more. Can anybody tell me something more if you know about Bretley? Anyone? Thank you. <laughs> 
He is extremely passionate about music, is what he said already. He practices music therapy with a lot of cancer patient children in our very own Mumbai area. He also encourages a lot of upcoming artists in our very own country as well as in his own country. He is also a fabulous guitar player and a piano player himself, if I may say so. And uh, not only that, he has a fashion label to his name too. That's the BL collection, right? Whoops, so that's something more. That's why I had said the most <laughs> multifaceted personality we could have got here. And it's not that he's, by the way, he's in Pune, that's why he's here. He has extreme passion for art in his heart. He believes that if he was not playing cricket, he would have been very upset about it. But if he was not open to music, if he was not having music in his life, his life would have been devastated. That's what he says. And uh, let's welcome Bretley, who's traveled all the way from Mohali early morning. He drove down to Delhi. He flew from Delhi to Pune. He just freshened up for a while and he's here just for us all. So let's hear it for him. And I'd like to request uh, Sunandan Neleji to please welcome him in our very own Puneri Paddhat. That is with the beautiful Puneri Pagdi. This may Brett look like a helmet, but this is a helmet of wisdom. <laughs> Yep. Very nice. First class. First class. Woo. I'd like to tell you in brief about our art and craft gallery, which has been brought for you all through her own passion, and that's by Akshaya Borkar. She has brought this because she herself is a very passionate artist. Along with her professional corporate career, she used to follow her art very, very passionately. And though she won several international awards for the same, but she could not get that wide reach that she wanted. And that's why she thought, why not bring something like this, which is going to give us a worldwide platform to not only me, to all the artists in the world. So being technologically very sound, she started this art and craft gallery along with her better half, her equal half, Samir Borkar, who is with her through thick and thin in all her ventures. And uh, we have participants from all over the world who come with us, who have joined with us, and we try and give them as much, as much as possible, as much exposure as possible. Akshaya has quite a few awards to her credit, actually. Uh, mainly, I'll just name a couple. In 2015, she got the bronze for the Stevie Winner Award for Women in Business. And in 2015, Motivating Mum Brilliant Biz Mum Awards and Expo winner amongst quite a few others. And I think we should hear it for Akshaya. She has also been given a lot of media coverage as well locally and internationally. And this in turn gives a lot of coverage to all those artists who have joined her. But what do we do at Art and Craft Gallery? What exactly is it that we do? What's our USP? We make the artists famous. We save 90% of your screen time, which you would have wasted sitting online and trying to sell your products on some social site or, the, or some marketing site or the other. 
which would have made you lose your creativity and you spend all your time trying to market where there are several thousand others trying to do the same thing and with minimal margins, if I may say so. And this really discourages an artist. So we try and give you 90%, we save you 90% of the screen time, we double your online exposure without increasing your own workload. We are a one-stop shop for all marketing and PR services for this beautifully creative industry. And we do not charge any selling commission. So every rupee, dollar, cent spent in this gallery goes directly to the artisan. But why are we doing this? Our vision is to abolish struggling artist phenomena and support the artist to flourish and become a huge industry in itself. By 2020, 80% of the traditional nine to five jobs will be replaced by technology. So humans will be forced to connect with their inner creative self and trade their gifts to build their own followers. Connection economy is here where traditional marketing needs to be changed. People buy because they care about the origin of their products and services. And that's where Akshaya Borkar and Samir Borkar play the role in bringing the artist and the consumer at one platform so that the artist is free to build his creativity. So I think let's hear it once more for Akshaya and Samir Borkar. You guys are doing a fabulous job. अपने जवर के पहाने सुनंदन लेले सर तंसत अपन स्वागत सत्कार कराला छवा तो कैन आई रिक्वेस्ट समीर टू प्लीज डू दी ऑनर्स थैंक यू सुनंदन सर एंड एक्चुअली वी आर ऑल लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू द नेक्स्ट सेशन वेरी वेरी ईगली आल्सो Okay, we have so many artists who are here from all over the country. They have come here specially to display their talent in front of you so that you encourage them. So I think it is, but we have to recognize them and laud them. So we would like to do that and I would like to request uh, Brett Lee to please felicitate all our participants. I'd be calling them one by one. So I'll just introduce them briefly and invite each one of them. First and foremost, Aboli Pense. She's the founder of Artists Creations and based in Pune. She creates intricate handicrafts and beautiful festive articles like clay dolls, diyas, wall hangings, rangolis, and much more. They also make appealing ready to use gift packaging. Aboli herself is a computer engineer turned a creative business owner now, Aboli Pense. And that's such a cute gift that she's handing over to Brett. And who better person to felicitate them than the person who is so passionate about art himself. The next person I'd like to invite, the next artist I'd like to invite is Ashwini Zoshi. Founder of TA Antro Jerry brand based in Pune, India. She creates amazing things by folding paper and by doing embroidery on handmade paper. Get customized nameplates, embroidered images of your pets and much more from her showcase. That's Ashwini Zoshi. The next artist who's going to be invited here is going to be Ashwini Kumbhar. She is the founder of Kalakruti Arts, again based in Pune. She makes beautiful Thai clay necklaces, earrings, and much more. Also, she has a family business of pottery, which brings some authentic clay creations from Kolhapur straight to Pune. Find some miniature pinch pots, five different types of Ganesha pots, Bhatukli, and many more wall hangings made of clay. That's Ashwini Kumbhar. And we have one more Ashwini whom we would like to felicitate, and that's Ashwini Gokhale, founder of G21 designer brand based in Pune, India. 
G21 specialists for handicrafting garments from Kalamkari fabrics for men and women. She also creates various types of accessories and bags from the same fabric. Wow, Brett is in for a whole lot of gifts today. <laughs> Devashri Pandit, she learned the skills to enable create work-life balance. Visit her stall to get your return gifts sorted out for the upcoming wedding season. That's Devashri Pandit. <laughs> Kalyan Mal Sahu, he is from Rajasthan and is a master of traditional Pichwai paintings and Tanjore style fabric paintings. He revives these dying arts to ensure the next generation learns these skills. Get your favorite Srinath Jeet's paintings in original style from him directly and if you visit his stall outside, he has some of the most beautiful things displayed out there. He is a national award winner too. And he follows this traditional Rajasthan culture which is there since more than 400 years. Prachi Zoshi. She is the founder of Prachi's Creations, where she creates hand embroidered dress materials for women. Every dress material is, unique, is a unique piece and there are no multiples. So ladies, this is all for you. So every piece you buy is only your own unique style. Get some summer cool cotton dress materials from her stall today. Let's welcome Prachi Zoshi. Come on, let's hear it for all the artists, ladies and gentlemen. The next gentleman again is from Rajasthan. He is Ram Soni. He is a master of traditional Sanji paintings and has won the UNESCO award. Check out his delicate paper creations with traditional Indian motifs. He also teaches this dying heart of Sanji Kala to keen learners. Let's welcome Ram Soni, the UNESCO award winner. Oh, that's so beautiful. We will now move over to our painter's participants. Anjali Huge. She is an electronics engineer turned artist from Pune. She rekindled her love for paintings and took art lessons from Master Daniel in the US. She is also a member of Master Secret Summit US. She has had four landscape paintings featured in articles in Imagine Review Dart, a Belgium-based... Well, firstly, thank you very much. Uh, it's uh, Sunda. Bahor Baria. Sab Shukriya, Brett. Our next awardee participant is Deba Brata Pal. She's originally from Orissa currently working as a design engineer in Pune. He pursues his passion for painting after his work routine. All his paintings are actually based on chromotherapy, which helps to bring peace and prosperity in your home and relationships. That's Deba Pratap Pal from Orissa. Thank you. Our next participant award winner is Mayur Gangasagar. Belongs to an artistic background, has his two generations have been well-known sculptors of Ganesh and Durga idols. Currently, he works in VFX industry for Hollywood-based studio in Pune. He also runs Rose Sun Studio, doing his paintings, photography, and commission work for his clients. Ooh. He is exhibited in group show in Melbourne, Australia.
He has exhibited in a group show in Melbourne, Australia with our own gallery in the year 2016. And we are next exhibition which is going to take place is going to take place only of Brett Lee's pictures. The next award winner is Minu Goel, is a well-traveled artist from Pune who has seen various cultures of India in her travels. She always depicts her observations of rural life, nature in India in her paintings. She has also exhibited in Mumbai, Bangalore and Pune in group as well as solo shows. Being a homemaker, she started working as an artist recently after her children grew up and now enjoys to see her passion turning into a professional level. That's Minu Goel. The next award winner and a participant is Pankaj Nagpure, a passionate artist specializing in calligraphy, oil paintings, and mixed media creations. He is currently working as an art teacher in Chopra, Jalgaon district. He has done many group shows in Pune as well as in Mumbai and he has won two awards as a best art teacher and that's Pankaj Nagpure. This is ABC in calligraphy. Okay. Thank you Pankaj. Our next awardee, award winner is Piyush Thakur, practicing art from a very early age started painting full-time in the year 2014 after his education in an art school. He is the recipient of Prafulla Dhanukar Art Foundation Award in Mumbai in the year 2017. <laughs> Abstract art is creative inven invention of my emotion, is what he says. The next award winner is Pratibha Gupte, a wife, a mother, a grandmother, a working woman, and much more. Her paintings are part of her daily life and showcases ideas, concepts which are close to her heart. Pratipa has done one solo show in Pune. Sudhir Moghe was not only her art promoter, but also learned paintings from her and inaugurated her first ever show, Pratibha Gupte. Wow, spiritual mantra handed over to him by Pratibhatai. <laughs> Ravi Dev has completed professional art degree and is running an advertising agency for the last 30 years in Pune. Recently, he has become a full-time fine artist creating realistic paintings in oil and pastel colors. He is a member of the Portrait Society of America and has participated in its show in the year 2008. His paintings are in collection of Swami Narayan Baroda, All India Arts UK and all over India. That was Ravi Dev. Our next participant, come award winner is Samir Ganpule. He's a third year art student pursuing his creative passion. He loves to create abstract paintings in oil or acrylic colors using the drip method. Wow. One more painting for our auction collection. That's so beautiful. The next person coming up is Satish Upal Vikar, is an art professor in art college in Kolhapur for the past two decades. He specializes in calligraphy and logo designing. He has participated in many group shows in Pune, Karad, Satara region, winning three awards for his art too. And he has come here, especially with his son, I'm sure, who is a great cricket fan. Tuzha nao kai bada? Rushikesh, cricket aur ta? Khertos? Yes. Hmm. Obviously, obviously. Ata tula Bretli barobar photo mila la. Kasa vatte Rushikesh tula? Kasa vatte? फक्त छान वाटते जक्कास वाटते म्हण की जक्कास वाटते हा मन थँक यू द नेक्स्ट पार्टिसिपंट अवॉर्ड विनर इज शकवरी रास्ते इज अ बडिंग यंग आर्टिस्ट फ्रॉम पुणे 
whose passion for painting reflects very strikingly in her work. A promising artist, she's extended her passion to teaching art with great zest. Shakwari's paintings are a zealous display of bold and striking colors, accentuated by a formation of different textures. Wow. The next participant coming up is Sharat Kulkarni, a retired income tax official who is now enjoying immersing in his passion for art and poetry. He enjoys recreating great paintings of the masters from European and American art era. You see some of his master's creations in the exhibit today. He has come with his grandchild, is it? He has no clue what's happening here. <laughs> He's just concerned with his chocolate and nothing more. <laughs> I don't want to give my chocolate to Brett. <laughs> I don't think he would want to give his chocolate to anyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. The next person coming up here to receive her award at the hands of Brett Lee is Snehal Page, a well-known young artist from Pune, who's trained from the art school in Pune and the US. She has a very distinct style of painting portraits and landscapes in oil and watercolor. She's won many awards for her superior style of painting. The next participant coming up is Vilas Kulkarni. He's learned art after pursuing his business for 20 years, and now his work gets recognition by the Watercolor Society in America, Fabriano in Italy, and much more. He was also invited as an exceptional guest in France in July 2014. And incidentally, he was the only artist invited from India. That's Vilas Kulkarni. Congratulations. And last but not the least, last only because he happens to be last in the alphabetical order, that's Vishwesh, Vishwesh Petkar. is an IT professional on weekdays and a very passionate painter on the weekends. He is practicing watercolor for past four years now and loves to capture the beauty in watercolor works. He has done live music and painting events along with five group shows in Pune. So let's hear it once. Thank you, Brett. Thank you so much. Thank you, Samir. If you could have your seat. This is all Oh! Ye chin sakta. <laughs> Aha. He's here for bowling for good cause. That is why I'm doing this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Quite a while, isn't it? Okay, now the stage is thrown open for the media to talk to Brett Lee. Can I just say, uh, firstly, thank you so much. That's uh, very, very overwhelming. It's beautiful to, to come here to be the, the guest of honour, firstly. Uh, I'm very, very honoured and I'm very proud and, and to, to get all these beautiful pieces of art, which I'll always cherish, and you know that I will take them home with me somehow, somehow, some way. I might speak to uh, a few of the boys from the team and we'll get them home. But uh, look, it's tremendous. Um, in terms of what I love to do, I'm, I'm not an artist at all. I can't draw a stick figure. So I do appreciate all the hard work and effort that um, you know, all the, the boys and girls have done here today and the ladies and the, the gents have done here today. I know that there's a lot of time and effort that goes into creating these wonderful masterpieces. Um, I'm sort of artistic in a different sense. I love music and I know that it's all the same sort of correlation and on the same um, par almost, if that's you know, a good way to explain it. Uh, and to me it was a nice little balance away from sports. So that's my little background on how I got involved in, in my artistic um, you know, loves and passion in this world. But uh, yeah, once, you know, once again, before I want to start, I want to say a big thank you. It's a, it's a huge honour for me to be here today to support what, all the hard work that you're all doing. So congratulations. Okay, please 
go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask a feedback question. I heard that you have an association with popular uh, plans, uh, one of the companies. So, what is your experience of that? Yeah. I came to know from my daughter in law. Uh, she's a serious speech therapist. Yep. Well, it's true. So I, I'm the, the global ambassador for Cochlear, which is helping a lot of um, you know, people around the world with um, profound hearing loss. And to me, this is it's, it's such a, a great thing for me to do because it makes you feel good. And it's very enjoyable. And it's actually you know, allowing... Um, you know, young boys and girls to be able to speak again and to be able to hear again, most importantly. So I've been very lucky coming to India. I've been, uh, I've had some amazing trips here since 1994. And every time I come back to your beautiful country, I feel really, really welcomed. Um, you know, I get treated like a king, which is incredible. So this is my little way of putting back into the way I've been treated. And I do believe in karma. I think that if you're a good person, what goes around comes around, and India's been incredible to me. So, this is my little way to put back in and just to say thank you for the, you know, the wonderful times I've had over here. Good. Look, India is such a, a wonderful place to tour. You know, I first toured here in 1994 with a, a young Australian side, and I made friends back then from VVS Lakshman. You know, who I was at the game with yesterday at IPL and we're talking and discussing, we work together in commentary and we're doing stuff on, on Star. Um, he's a terrific guy, but you make friends for life. And that's what, that's what sport does. It brings a lot of people together. Um, and you know, you make a lot of friendships throughout the world. And I know that if I ever come over to India, I've created and, and, and made a lot of friends from Sachin Tanduka to Vivius Lakshman to those types of people. Yeah, I'm looking forward. I think it's called a billion dreams, is it? Yeah. <laughs> it should be 1.2 billion dreams, maybe, 1.3. <laughs> That's just here in India. There's probably about 5 billion. Uh, but look, he, he is a terrific guy. He's, a, he's an absolute gentleman. You know, anyone that's played 200 test matches is massive respect. Uh, we've had some amazing tussles on the field. Um, but we've also, you know, made sure that we respect each other most importantly and yeah we can always catch up which we always do sorry madam madam g actually i have a question see uh, sports that's your passion in bowling also there's a rhythm yes and you are a guitarist your love for music so what's your first love oh that's a good question uh, i always say that you know, with you put the family aside because family to me always comes first. But in terms of what I love to, my passions, you know, in life, I think that music's allowed me to play sport because sport's very stressful. It's a lot of fun. It's hard work. It's rewarding. There's all these different things and different ways that you can look at sport and what you can get out of sport. I'm not talking about from a, a financial point of view. I'm not talking about from any other sense, it's what you can take away from the game, you know, the friendships and the sportsmanship, um, the partnerships, bowling in tandem with somebody else. But I've always said that music's the thing that keeps me normal, it keeps me sane. So if I've played against India and I've got none for 100 and I'm feeling pretty devastated and pretty low and you go home and you're depressed at night and you think far out, I've, I've missed out on taking a wicket you get the guitar out and you play a few chords and it's like everything's okay again. So that's my, that's my outlet. Where I know that there's, you know, um, people here, you know, ladies and gentlemen that are IT specialists and they work the whole week and then on the weekend they like to do their passion. So yes, they still probably enjoy the nine to five job Monday to Friday, but it's when the weekend comes when they can express themselves. And the way I could express myself in the cricket field was to bowl, which I love doing. And it's all the travel that goes with it. And all the pressure from the media. You guys are fantastic though, all the media here today are brilliant, thank you. Um, but it's, it's all the pressure that goes with it. And to me, music 
was something that allowed me to, to keep focused and to switch off from sport. And the next day I'd go back on the field and I'd, I'd go there with a nice, clean, fresh mind. May last Thank two you. questions, please? Yeah, yeah. Bon. If I'm asked. Well, I caught up yesterday with uh, Pretty Zinta, up, the, up north. <laughs> Look, I, I, I've been, you know, you can imagine that you get offered a lot of different Bollywood roles. And I, I was lucky to do a movie two years ago, which is an Australian film, which is actually being shown currently here. Uh, it's called Un-Indian, and I believe now I'm almost half Indian, if, if not three-quarter Indian, I always tell everyone now. <laughs> I've gone from totter totter to maybe almost three quarters. But the funny story about the movie was, you know, when you... I've played cricket since I was nine, so you get used to seeing, you know, yourself on the TV screen bowling. That becomes part of you as a, as a person. Or you might walk past a pub back in Australia and the, and the cricket's on and you see yourself bowling and you think, OK, that's a bit weird, but it's sort of normal. Or well, you might turn on the TV here in India and every second channel is a, a cricket channel and they're all watching cricket and then they might have some highlights. But when you're on, on an aeroplane and you're coming back from the bathroom and you look at someone's screen and they're watching your movie, it's like, <laughs> awkward. <laughs> and you just try to sort of sneak back in your seat and they're looking. And they're not always you know, either Indian people or they're not always Australians. They're like, they could be from anywhere around the world and they're like trying to work out what's going on. So that's, that's, I still haven't gotten over that yet, but I really, really enjoyed the experience. And yes, to answer your question, I'd love to do a Bollywood film, but it'd have to be the role. I reckon an action, I'd like to play an action part. Ooh. Sunny's on, you know, like a, maybe like a <laughs> danger man or something. <laughs> Last question, please. Yeah. Hey, Brett. Eight minute, eight minute, eight minute, eight minute. Yeah. Oh, it's okay row. for a few more. It's okay. We've got yeah, time. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Front row. Punch. Uh, do you plan to settle in India? Do I plan to settle in India? Look, to me, India is the most incredible place to come because, as I said, every time I come back, it gets better and better. My home is always in Australia, and my second home is here in India. And I think because I've got that right balance, then I enjoy it. It's like anywhere. You know, home is home. To me, home is in Australia because I've got my beautiful family back home and my mum and dad. Um, and it's always nice to spend, you know, I can spend up to 150 days in India per year. And that's why it's always good to go home and to have that right balance. I think if I was in Australia the whole time, we're missing India. And if I was in India the whole time, I'd definitely be missing Australia. So I think I've got the right balance. Yeah, the next one. Yeah, trying to. What makes India very special? This is a question I get asked a lot from um, you know, my friends back at home. Guys and girls, they say, what is your attraction to India? And you know what, it's really hard to put you know, your finger on what it is. To me, it's the, the people firstly, the culture, the colour, the, the senses, the, the excitement, the organised chaos, as I call it, which happens over <laughs> here, which I love. But very passionate and I like that and I've always said if you want to get the best service in the world you know you go to India and it's true the Indian and I don't have to tell you but the Indian culture is from what my understanding is is that they will try and do whatever they can to make you feel comfortable and that's the reason why I've learnt you know like a little bit of Hindi as being a to show us you know a sign of being um, polite respectful all these different things where you can actually feel as if that you're going to contribute into your country but it, I don't know it's I love how you're so passionate about sport you know 1.3 billion people and I'd say 98 percent of them all love cricket <laughs> and 92 percent of them would probably know my stats better than me because I don't know my, my, my stats but you walk in the hotel and the girl behind the counter should know your bowling stats all of them know more cricket than Sachin Tendulkar yes that, correct that is very important yeah. but it's just a beautiful place and I love it. And I keep saying to my friends, you've got to go and visit it. You know, you've got to go and see it. And they say, but isn't it hot? Isn't it humid? You know, isn't it crowded? I said, yeah, it is. But that's what makes it good. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's at, at best. <laughs> I did. What 
it's, it's, it's weird because I can, it must be different parts of the brain and I'm obviously not a, you know, a brain surgeon or anything like that. But um, from, from what I understand, you know, you use different parts of your brain to, you know, be creative on different sides. So I know that I can hear a song and I still can't read music, but I can work out where the key is and then I can get the guitar and I can hear that, that, that key in my mind because it's like imprinted and I can work out where the key is and then I can hear a song once and almost know every single lyric just by hearing the song once. It's with names, I'm, it, it's hard, like I, I struggle with names because I meet so many different people every single day. But with art, like I tried at school and I was hopeless. I could draw around my hand, that's about it. I can do like the imprint around my hand. <laughs> But I've had a mate that was an artist, and we, we were like we're best mates. And he was a um, a designer, worked for Walt Disney, and did all that type of stuff. So he did some caricatures and you know do all the stuff with Walt Disney. But I was yeah, that was never my. I, I was hopeless at it. And I even did a thing the other day on a blackboard where we had to do Crictionary, so cricket terms, draw it, and I was dreadful. <laughs> so I'm not gonna say that I'm a good artist because I'm hopeless but that's why I said I appreciate it even more how you can actually see something and then put it up on canvas and that to me is just absolute beautiful it's gorgeous here is my question to you you are a best Australian baller uh, and uh, you are coming for the for this event for the art what what you how you express the sports in uh, language of art well someone said to me one day they said when you go in the cricket field, what, what do you feel? And I always said, I, just feel, I, I feel pure joy. Because when I walk out past that white line, over the boundary rope, I'm in my absolute world of element. You know, I'm just in my absolute bliss. It's the same when you're doing your paintings and your drawings and you, you know, you're cutting out all the stuff. You just feel relaxed and you feel like, you know, you're not even thinking, you're just, you're just, you're just doing it which is why I train very hard in order to have that, that feeling. And I've always said, it's, it's a bit like an actor. So to me, on the field, I'm totally different to off the field. On the field, I'm the aggressive, fast bowler, wants to intimidate, wants to take wickets. And you're almost playing a role, you're almost being an artist, you're almost being an actor out there. So you know, you, you've got a, a crowd of 100,000 people at Eden Gardens or at the Melbourne Cricket Ground and you know you want to put on a show for the people because people have paid good money to come and watch you play. So you want to put on a good show and a good performance. But off the field, which is why I could separate the two, I'm, I'm different. You know, I'm, I'm the kid that was born in the country. I'm the person that calls mum and dad every single day. I've got a beautiful, tight-knit family. And I even think some mornings I get up and I, I forget that I've even played cricket because it's been such a great part of my life, but it's not the be-all and end-all. You know, it, it's a huge chunk of my life, but I love other things. You know, I love the outdoors. I love music. Uh, you know, I love music therapy. I love to help people. I love to, to go camping. I love all these different things, which I think is very important, rather than having one interest, because if you've only got one interest, then you're pretty boring, I think. Who was the most difficult to boring? Who was the one in your batsman that? Most difficult to boring. Most difficult? <laughs> Sachin Tandoka. And he was... I mean that because he, he's the, the batsman. The thing that makes a good batsman, in my opinion, is time. Now, when you think about you know, the, the, the length of the cricket pitch, when, when I bowl the ball, you've got 0 0.3 of a second. So you've got less than half a second to make up your mind of where, what you're going to do. Duck the ball, weave, play a cover drive. And Sachin had time. And that's what makes a great batsman a world-class batsman, you know, the difference between a normal batsman or a great batsman or a world-class batsman. And Sachin's bat felt about this big when I was... He would present the full face of the bat and it felt so wide, which it wasn't, but that's because he was so talented. But, yeah, um, I, I've always said he's been, you know, in my opinion, the, the best batsman ever. Hi, Brad. Who is the most important person in your life who inspired you? Sorry, say that again. Who is the most important person in your life? Who's inspired you? Um, inspired you? Look, I'd have to say my parents. Because my, 
my dad took me to the nets every single day, every afternoon, because he'd work, um, you know, like a nine to five job. We'd come home from school, he'd literally come home from work and then he'd, he'd take us straight down the cricket nets. So I've got two brothers, one older, one younger, and my older brother Shane also played for Australia. So we're very lucky to both play and, and represent Australia together. My younger brother is a qualified pianist. He went into forensic accountancy. You know, he's, a, he's got like a lot of things going for him. So we're always very lucky. We had a very close-knit family. But my, my dad never played cricket. But he knew that we were passionate about playing cricket and just backed us 100%. So um, yeah, I think my parents, and you know, I still look up to my parents, and I reckon that's where, why I think I fit in with Indian culture is because I know that you look up to your parents and your elders, and you respect your elders, which is very important. I'm not saying that they don't do it in Australia, but you know, you're not really going to go and live with your parents in Australia. It's not not the sort of cool thing to do. Over here, it works, um, and I, you know, I know that I, you know, I look up to my mum and dad every single day. Same here. Thank Bye. you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Please, please don't mind. Thank you so much, everyone. We now declare this exhibition officially and formally open. And uh, thanks, Brett, and thanks, uh, Sunandanji. Thanks for being so sporting and answering everyone's questions with an equal zeal and enthusiasm. I request you all to please remain seated while our guest is escorted outside. We'll meet back within 10 minutes for the talk show that we are going to have. This is for those who have the tickets and the passes only, please. Once thank again, you thank so you much. very much and I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Well done.